name's Paul Murray. I'm uh, very happy to be part of the Eye for Travel conference today in, in beautiful Las Vegas. I'm glad to see everybody here. Uh, the name of my presentation is Revenue Management is Dead, Long Live Revenue Management. So I'm taking a little different tack today than with some of the presentations we've seen this morning, but I'm hearkening back to the old phrase, when a king passed away and a new uh, king was, uh, um, was anointed to take a new leadership position and take people in a new direction. My presentation today is about how we take some of the thoughts we've heard today uh, and apply them to revenue management and move into the future into total revenue optimization. So as many of you know, I am a local resident here in Las Vegas. And uh, uh, with that being the case, it's not possible to, to overlook uh, the recent uh, tragedy, tragedy that affected the city and our nation. And so I really wanted to uh, send a personal thank you to I for Travel for uh, supporting our community and moving forward with this uh, conference. And then I also wanted to thank everybody that's in attendance today for your support of our city. So thank you very much. So there, there's been a lot of tremendous content as, uh, uh, content, as I've alluded to. A lot of it's centered on personalization. I want to take this presentation in a little different direction and talk about how we apply some of that analytical power to uh, uh, travel uh, revenue management. And so that's just a, a different slant here, but I think it's in line with everything that we've been talking about. As a brief introduction to my background, I've spent the better part of two decades in hospitality revenue management, leading corporate strategies, technologies, and analytics. I have experience with companies such as Hilton, Hyatt, MGM Resorts, and now I'm proud to be head of hospitality strategy for revenue analytics which is a technology-enabled consulting firm that helps the world's biggest companies make the biggest uh, revenue decisions. So let's get started with the presentation. As my title has alluded to, we need to think, rethink revenue management now. We need to put some dramatic thought about how we move past revenue management and how we move into the concept of total revenue optimization. Why do we need to do that? We need to do that because, as we've seen today, we're not making the progress towards the state that uh, everybody believes they have or that we wish that we would have. And what happens if you don't do move in these directions? Somebody else is gonna move in these directions. They're gonna attain total revenue optimization and they're gonna eat their c competition for lunch. And so I know a lot of you may be thinking, you know, who's this guy? What is he telling me what to think? Uh, I, I work for a hospitality company or a travel company, and we lead revenue management. We're comfortable sitting in a position at the top of the heap, and we're just going to stay there. So don't take it from me. Um, take it from experts in the field like the, the people in the audience today. In a recent uh, article published by uh, Cornell's highly esteemed hotel uh, professor, Sherry Kimes, called The Future of Hotel Revenue Management, uh, Sherry took a research study of revenue management leaders in 2010, asked them about the current state of revenue management, and asked them to predict the future of revenue management in 2010. Then she had a follow-up survey several years later in 2016 and asked people to reflect back on those predictions, to comment on them, and then make new predictions about the future. And so some of the content of that article I think is important to our discussion today. In 2010, respondents uh, predicted that revenue management would be applied to all revenue streams, this is ho hotels, by the year 2015. So that's behind us now. But in 2016, when people reflected back on that prediction, they said that this was still a work in progress. So we have some proof right here that we're not reaching the goals that we're setting out for ourselves in the beginning. So there was more questions, and the 2016 uh, respondents were asked, what is the future of revenue management? Again, the future of revenue management is total hotel revenue management is the wave of the future. So there's a certain definition about insanity that might apply here. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it does feel like we're banging our head against the wall here. So I would like to talk about how we get to the next stage of total revenue optimization. And to do that, we need to talk about what's changed in revenue management over the period of time. Um, <clears throat> starting with yielding. In the very early ages, revenue management came out of airlines and was applied to hotels and was um, an inventory-based approach to yielding. In the future, 
Total revenue optimization is dynamic and looks at all the different costs of obtaining a guest and all the different revenue uh, uh, profit centers that they provide to your hotel or to your travel company. In the past, re revenue management looked at guests as a transaction to the benefit of the organization, one transaction being just as good as any other transaction. Moving forward, total revenue optimization needs to look at the guest as a relationship and that somebody has a, a full uh, experience across their entire life, got, lifetime of engagement with an organization. My uh, good friend and colleague, Matt Bush, has a great story that uh, relates to this. He travels many times a month to go see the same client. He travels with a team, uh, takes up several sleeping rooms. Uh, he eats in the hotel restaurant afterwards. He goes to the hotel bar. He has a long lifetime value with this organization and he has many different re revenue streams. He goes to book this hotel again and can't get a reservation because the hotel sold out on a Tuesday night. And so as Matt picks up all of his revenue streams and possibly permanently relocates to another hotel to take his team to to see this client, we have to ask ourselves, is this a good long-term revenue management decision for our hotel? The answer is no, I think everybody understands that. These are the ways we need to be thinking to move into the realm of total revenue optimization. In the past, we looked at guests just at the transient guests and how can we optimize price and inventory just for the transient guests. In the future, we need to be looking at all the different guests and all their different touch points in our, org in our companies. In the past, revenue management was based on low technology. So we had fax machines, we had green screens, we had uh, mainframes. We, uh, th that's the world that we operate on. That's when revenue ma that's the when revenue management was born. In the future, we need to embrace the nearly limit limitless capabilities that we've been talking about today. We're operating in the cloud. We have more computing power and intelligence than we've ever had. And I read a quote earlier this week that said, "Just in the year 2017." we will create more data than in the past 5,000 years of human history combined. How do we use that information to do revenue management better? We need to be asking ourselves that question. In the past, revenue management was a centralized function that lived inside an organization that made pricing and inventory decisions. In the future, we need to think about revenue management analytical capabilities being decentralized and permeated through entire organizations so that we can be making these analytical decisions across every phase of the organization. So if we're on the right track, this is how things look. So I'm gonna just start from today and we're gonna build, build up. So today, revenue management is built on core technology. We have reservation systems, we have sales systems, we have inventory management systems, and we have distribution systems, channels, and partners. That's the core input to revenue management today. On top of that, we build a pricing and inventory management strategy and then a culture surrounding that that helps us per, uh, push revenue management through the organization. And then we build technologies that are primarily focused on transient, as I said earlier, and they include items like demand forecasting, inventory controls, overbooking, pricing recommendations more recently. Moving forward into total revenue optimization, revenue management can take into consideration uh, the total lifetime value of a guest. I think we're here, we're here on the strip. The casinos do a really good job of understanding total value of their gamers. And we need to be able to do that in the uh, hotel business as well. Then we also have seen uh, moving forward into total revenue optimization. We see airlines doing a really good job in many cases with personalizing bundles and upselling people into different products based on the type of guests they are and uh, what type of preferences they have. That can be applied to hotels as well. And then also looking into cruise ships where they do a tremendous job of managing room type inventory and segmenting that out and selling it at an optimal level. That can also be applied to revenue management moving forward across all of our travel industries. But beyond revenue management, we can move into the area of sales, the same type of revenue management analytical capabilities. So we can move into uh, very intelligent ways of doing group forecasting. 
as, as, as opposed to the manual ways that they're done today. We can look at doing scientific group pricing as, a, as opposed to some of the simple displacement analysis that we see today. We can apply these analytics to optimize function space, to manage sales lead scoring, to uh, build an incentive program that works to the uh, individual and the organization's um, uh, benefit both, and then to uh, optimize the food and beverage menu offerings that uh, we serve to the groups as they're in the hotel. Beyond sales, revenue management analytics can be applied to marketing to help understand that we're utilizing the best marketing channels and bringing um, the best business to the hotel. We can use analytics to synchronize revenue management system demand forecasts so that we can generate demand through offers and promotions to bring guests to the hotel uh, when we need them. And then we can also build rewarding uh, loyalty programs to drive loyalty to the hotel. So again, we're just building here from revenue management out through a typical hotel organization. We can apply revenue management analytics to distribution to make sure we're optimizing our channel mix, to make sure that we're negotiating wholesale and volume account contracts that don't just um, benefit the individual hotel, but benefit the entire organization. We can look at personalized bundle, bundling as we've talking, uh, spoken about earlier. We can embed smart ways of doing room type upselling. We can uh, measure and improve brand site conversion, and we can do the same for call centers, making sure that we're capturing guests at the highest conversion rate possible. We can move revenue management type analytics into brands so that we understand that we have the right brand mix, that within the brand we have the right uh, mix of ownership and franchisees, that we can measure and prove to owners that we bring a value to them as a franchisee, and then we can look at market penetration and determine whether we've saturated a market with a certain brand or whether there's opportunities in a market to bring a different brand in. And last but not least, we can expand revenue management analytics into finance and operations. We can use the same tools to understand if we're optimizing staffing levels, whether we have the right outlets in a hotel. There's a key uh, train of study called restaurant revenue management. Are we doing that to the restaurants inside of our hotels? Are we optimizing pricing and inventory for spas? Are we optimizing our function space allocation? Um, uh, and then are we uh, integrating our forecast uh, from revenue management into finance so that there's a back and forth there? Revenue management systems today have a microcosm of data. We talked about that earlier. Moving to, towards the future, we need to expand that data set. And so wouldn't it be great if we had that same set of data from revenue management sitting right next to your loyalty data, your customer value uh, uh, calculations? Uh, 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 financial statistics like uh, details from your folio, website traffic, point of sales information, and then marry it together with external data so that you had a more holistic view of what your guests were, were doing and where they were coming from and how they were using your hotel so that you can make better uh, decisions about them. So I know from my own experience there's a lot of reasons that uh, people rationalize why we can't get to this state. And so there's excuses around vendors. I have a specific a vendor in revenue management, and that's not their view of revenue management. They, I'm not their top client. They're not moving as fast as I am. I think we need to understand that we either work with our um, vendors, we work around our vendors, or we move on from our vendors to get past that um, stopping point. There's hurdles and excuses surrounding technology. I understand that organizations need a singular view of technology and how it applies to the entire company. But we can't do that to, to the state where we have rigid technology that stops innovation. There's te uh, excuses around people. Uh, we need to deploy enterprise technology through different individuals in the organization. I actually think that's a benefit. Let's include those people in the design of our uh, functionality and then the acceptance of the functionality, and then they become champions and, ro and nearly roll it out themselves. There's limitations surrounding investment. We might have uh, restricted funds for investing. So work around that. Start small, move big. Or build such a strong business case that your company can't move forward without capturing these financial benefits immediately. And then last, there's excuses around uh, executives. I don't have a channel into them. Somebody else is making a decision. You need to uh, bang your drum constantly until your message is heard. So listen. 
At the end of the day, excuses are BS, right? Excuses are failure with a capital F. Excuses are you've lost already. See you later, have a nice day. So how do we get there? We start with the basics. Let's make sure we have revenue management right. We have the right systems feeding us the right data so that we can make the right strategic decisions on pricing and inventory management, that we wrap a culture around that where people are empowered and we have technology that can apply data science to the good data that we have here. Then, in our organization, start to build your data capabilities so we can have a base of information that can be used to service the whole organization in this, in this term. Then, start to embed analytical power across the organization. We don't just put analytics in revenue management. We need, revenue, we need analytics across every part of our organization. Then we need to leverage data uh, intelligence. We need to put data science to work so that we can make strong decisions um, um, and point people in the right direction. And then my last step on uh, getting there is drive users to action. There's always something that will require human sensibilities in terms of decision making. So we need to make sure that we include them in the process. So I'll end where I began. We need to dramatically rethink revenue management so that we can move to total revenue optimization. Why? Because we're not making progress. We've, we've, we've seen that now. Uh, and if you don't, your competitors are going to eat you for lunch. And I don't know what you prefer, but I prefer to eat my competition for lunch. So let's get started now. Thank you. Well, let me ask you something for perspective. Very interesting, and I loved your example of Matt and what that one revenue management decision meant right. in long-term yeah. revenue, not only for rooms, but for food and beverage. It ties together this concept of personalization and total revenue management. Go ahead, how can the uh, uh, hotel work away from doing that? Well, um, I think there's very inter interesting ideas in casinos, and they do this with their, with their gamers. But we have to start to understand who our best guests are. Uh, we need to understand what their total spend is. We need to piece together all those pieces of information. And then we need to start to either allocate inventory to those guests so that we say, we can possibly manage most people the way we've been doing it, but we have something blocked off mm -hmm. to uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, book somebody like Matt, who's high lifetime value. We want to always have inventory available for him. So that's one way to approach the problem. Part of that, tell me if you agree with this, hotels are service, and all travel agency industries are. And they're real good at taking care of the customer when the customer is being serviced. But otherwise, the customer is not an individual. They're part of a segment. That's right. And that's the mentality change that I see needing to happen. No, I agree with you. I think um, there are many great reasons why hotel companies in particular will segment guests. It makes things simpler and easier for them. But I don't, I don't think we need to be limited by that. That can still exist, but you can move beyond that in terms of your decision making. So some of the things we've been talking about today, artificial intelligence and machine learning, we can start to segment out some of those best guests so that we're nearly looking at a one-to-one -one segment, guest to segment. Okay. Any questions come up? Let me see. Uh, what do you think about price optimization software? Oh, God. Do they work by themselves, or do you think humans still have a hand in it? Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of call, calling uh, revenue management technology a cyborg. It's part human, it's part machine. So um, there, there is some great capabilities that are out there. Um, I think that uh, a pricing recommendation has some background in it. It comes from your demand forecast. And in my belief, a demand forecast is where the human interacts with the machine the most. The human knows that the hotel across the street uh, had uh, flooded their meeting space or flooded the third floor. A machine will not know that. Mm -hmm. And so a human has to help educate on demand, and then you can get better automated pricing recommendations. So the human can help the forecast, which goes into the optimization process, but probably the optimization process is best done by the machine. I would say yes. There's, as we've heard it before this morning. There's so many calculations to be done there that it's hard to imagine a human doing that. Let's take uh, any questions from the audience. We have one more on the board here. Let's go ahead and finish up with that. 
I'm a hotel, I can identify customer and willingness to pay, and I know that if I offer different rates to different customers for a day local room, I can increase revenue. How do I execute this online? Well, I, I think that's a great question. I think there are, are, are ways that we can use that type of machine learning to segment guests to understand what the reason of the, uh, the trip is, and then, it, then you modify what you present to the guest online. So um, I, I was looking at a recent hotel company across their app and across mobile and across every hotel and across every date. I got the same room recommendations and the same rate recommendations. That does not have to exist. And, and maybe you have to enter through, um, um, we, we have a lot of um, uh, uh, loyalty rates that are available right now. So maybe you enter your loyalty and then there's more information that's known about you. We saw machine learning. Uh, discussions this morning about understanding the purpose of your trip as you go, and then we can make uh, offers that are more appealing to the individual. Okay, that makes sense. Any final thoughts? No, I'm, I'm proud to be here, and um, I'm glad to be part of this uh, um, uh, conference. So thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Paul.